the original host, Miss Gemma Garrett, um, here to answer a few questions because she is always quizzing everyone else. Yes, indeed. And Peggy C. Of here. course. <laughs> You're going to give us all the dirt, aren't you, Peggy? <laughs> so good that your dog can't speak. <laughs> I can imagine. Here, tell us the crack. Tell us the crack. Well, Where well, do you well. want to start? 1981? <laughs> Way back. <laughs> right at the start. Where did it all begin? <laughs> um, no, we'll start with Briella. Briella. Yeah, so Briella. Where did the name come from? Well, I'm sure everyone knows this, um, but those who are watching who don't know it, um, Briella was just um, a mash of my two dogs' names, Buddy and Stella, who um, were two British Bulldogs like Peggy. And um, they were the loves of my life, as they you know. Were. Let's not be crying on <laughs> the second <laughs> sentence in. And, um, yeah, and my love for animals and um, my passion for using products that are against um, testing on animals and um, just my love for looking after the environment and everything. So that's where Briella came from. So we sell products from all over the world, lifestyle products that are ethically sourced organic and are definitely in no way tested on an animal um, right down to the finest finest ingredients and then from then i went on to um to make the hydro firm cream and, and our candles and that was so difficult as well because you know you get to the final stage and you think it's done and then they, they come back and said this tiny tiny um, ingredient was tested on an animals but like it's fine and i'm like no it's not fine right back to the start well, not right back to start, but find a different ingredient that's like that. Um, so, yeah, I'm really proud of that. And hopefully, um, it's been a, a long couple of years with COVID and stuff um, that put a halt to everything. But hopefully in the next couple of years, the brand's going to grow and then um, we're going to have more products coming out. So we don't just sell our own, we sell other people's products as well. Mm -hmm. How many years was it in the making before you launched? Um. It actually came as a, a mis an accident, to be honest. Lots of people were contacting me saying, do you really believe in this tan or do you really use that product and whatever. And I just thought, and I know money um, is very important, but my opinion can't be bought for £200 mm -hmm. so, or £500, whatever the, the client's going to pay. People can't come to me and say, will you tell all your followers that you love this cream if I don't love it? £500 is not going to change that for me. Um, and that's the, the world that we live in at the minute. I'm sure you know, Ashley. Like yeah, of course. Um, we just live in a world where people are promoting and promoting and promoting anything for money. And um, I just thought to myself, I wish I had like a website or an umbrella where if, it, if the product's on there, then people know that I actually really love them. I'm not being paid for it. Yeah, it's and hard that, to come by, and I mean this in the nicest way, um, genuine influence of yeah. And influencing at the minute um and i know from yourself you obviously have a lot of supportive friends um of who course. buy your products as well they do is... like my friends have been so good and i didn't realize until i uh, started my own business that you know you should never be asking your friends this is terrible for freebies or discount or whatever you know especially a small business like that and it's so lovely it's happened with you and rebecca mcguire and all my good friends you know you just see a wee order coming through from one of your friends and you're just like <laughs> my heart could explode right now mm -hmm. because you know you could have easily just lifted the phone saying can i have a cream but when it's paying your bills yeah of course so buella i've got big big hopes for it and um, we're actually thinking that we're going to be selling on um a shopping channel on, on okay TV, which um, a lot of people think's cringe but let me tell you something shopping channels are coming back like okay. they are back so um, well, we don't like to socialise anymore after COVID. So, exactly. <laughs> so um, hopefully that deal is going to be done in a couple of weeks. And I'm really excited about that. And I've got an amazing friend in London, Keith, who we've been friends from flip 2009, long, long time ago. And um, when I started working for Newcastle United, and we've been best friends from that. He's really, really helped me out um, with Briella. He, he's been fantastic. So... Um, he's put this deal together and um, fingers crossed I've maybe scut it myself now by saying it but anyway. saying it. Um, what's next product wise what's your eyes on what's the plans or are you even allowed to tell us no no no, no but there is a new product coming out so um, we've got new candles um, 
brand new there was scents. a big delivery this morning I see them in so we've got new scents in our candles um, which are great and it's all reclaimed wax so it's really really good for the environment mm-hmm. we're not, you know it's reclaimed so we really do have a passion when I say we it's me <laughs> it's me and Peggy <laughs> and I really do have a passion for trying to look after the environment um, as best we can and ethically sourced as well I don't want anything that I am selling to be made in a factory where people are being paid below the minimum yeah, wage that's course. why the products are slightly a wee bit on the higher end but you know that's why you pay for yeah what you get pay for what you get so yeah and that's that on your lunch <laughs> that's on <laughs> that <day. laughs> shut up <laughs> she's going to be killed later okay so you're still single yes um, I love your interviewing skills because obviously she knows that because we've been on holiday together for a week. And then yeah, I've seen her and she was getting on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is another topic as well. I'm 40 and single and I'm telling you stories that you already know because you're yeah, one of, of my best friends. I don't know. You just don't know. Um, so we were on holiday together and, you know, this is my favourite thing, right? <laughs> People go, oh, and do you have a partner? And I'm like, no, no, I'm single. And they're like, like this kind of can you get that like that kind of uh, and I'm like what what does that mean because these are the people who constantly have been telling me for the last half an hour over a few drinks how much they hate their husband or hate their wife or they feel trapped or they're only with them for financial um security security all the things like you've heard now I'm Mm. not saying all couples obviously I'm not before I'm absolutely annihilated but I'm like and then in the next breath you're like oh and that's not th- happening to you. <laughs> like, yes, it's great. I'm single. Do you think they think you're lonely? Um, they probably do. And they probably think there's a reason for me being single, which, you know, like she's mental there or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> a little bit crazy. <laughs> um, no, but maybe they do think I'm lonely, but I have such amazing family, amazing support group of friends. I've got Peggy. Um... And I was talking about this last night as well at Six by Nico um, with one of my friends, Marcus, who's coming on the show as well. And this is going to sound like I am such a wanker for saying this and that's fine. right? <laughs> but I am so happy and secure with who I am, where I am in life, what I'm doing, that the person coming in, even if I want, even just to go on a couple of dates, I mean, they need to be, probably they, probably they don't exist. And that's the that's the, the harsh. What's your expectation of someone coming in? Like for you to change your look on relationships. Sometimes I feel like when because we have similar outlooks on dating and marriage and whatever. Um, and I think sometimes people when they listen to it, we met guys on holiday mm-hmm. who basically said it that we just sound damaged, broken, and. That we that we have problems. That was one of the lines. Do you remember? Yeah. Um, but as you said, I think it's just the norm. People set out by the end end of their twenties, start of their thirties. Their goal is to be married mm-hmm. and then have kids, and that's just the way. And that's life lovely. has been. And if that's your been. goal, see, if that's your goal, that is amazing. That really is, but it's just not my goal. Mm. Um, and people think because we've been so conditioned by society to want that that people just think oh well you haven't actually got happiness and I'm thinking I'm definitely happier than you <laughs> the majority of people I speak to I'm thinking I am probably happier you're thinking I'm going to get sued in two minutes aren't you I can see <laughs> <laughs> yeah, laugh, yeah, laugh. Uh, no I think I was trying to play a, wee, a little bit of devil's, devil's advocate, advocate because yeah. I think but it's hard when you have the same opinion. And as you've already said, it's not everyone. It's not all marriages. It's not... Well, I know people who are in amazing marriages. Yeah. Of course. But it's... When we were talking there about dating apps, you see people who are in relationships who are married. You see people who... And then when you meet in town, you see guys when they're out, women when they're out. It's not all the one, obviously. Um, I've lost count of how many okay, people just did it <laughs> <laughs> no I was actually going to say um, 
about married men that I've actually blocked on social media because oh. of them in my DMs and I'm like, you have a wife. Where do Am you I allowed stand? to say that? Yeah, of course. Where do you stand with that? Like, I literally give them one, one warning. Like, you message me again, it's gone public. Like, I would, like, you know, I am a woman's woman. Yeah, like, 100%. No, I will go to your wife's door and tell her. <laughs> That's it. I am always um, in two minds about that. It would depend on the, the uh, what's that word? How extreme it is. Yeah. If it was, if it's just in my DMs, I just block because I just feel like there's going to be someone else, and yeah. do you know? And I just think there's, it's not, not that I'm saying that it's not bad, but it's not bad enough for me to then ring up the wife and like find her details and ring her up. Yeah. Do you know? But. Yeah, I just. Well, I don't. Real. I actually don't know where the line is that somebody would have to cross for me to go. You're going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> TikTok trend. <laughs> You're going to jail. Uh, um, yeah. About when I go, do you know what? I'm telling your wife about this. Yeah. Do you know? I don't actually know where that is because, like, now talking, if I'm being really honest, talking about it, I'm just going straight away, tell the wife what he's at, what he's trying to be at, or whatever. Yeah. But I think when it, it happens in a situation, I think it's very because I have countless stories of where this has happened to friends or girls that I know where they've just been repulsed by how a man's trying to be with them in a nightclub or whatever and they went to tell a girlfriend because they've had a mutual friend and it's just backfired. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah, I always shoot the messenger, like that's fine, but I would still stand by it. I mean, I just think, yeah, no. Like, and sometimes you can be, uh, my mum would say, loyal to a fault, you know, mm-hmm. I'll tell I'll tell a story. Obviously, you know the story, but we were on holiday, um, and we met these guys, and they were lovely guys, and they really looked after us. Didn't yes, they, they really they did. They really, really they looked after great. us, and made sure we got home safe and whatever. And they were gentlemanly, but they started to tell a story about one of our friends. <laughs> Murder. Now we went from the happiest people ever to they like were cold as ice. <laughs> they were afraid. They, they were afraid. <laughs> And the story wasn't even bad about one of our friends at all. It was just that as soon as we heard her name mentioned, we were like, what? Yeah, the name was mentioned and then there was a laugh. Yeah. And that's what got my back up straight away. And sometimes, yeah, like the story wasn't even bad. We didn't even let it listen. We didn't even let it finish before we were jumping on the bandwagon. So you can be a bit like you can have your back up a bit too much. Oh, they definitely thought we were mental after it. Yeah. 100%. But. And that's probably why they were the ones that called us damaged and had problems. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do. Uh, so yes, on the dating site, um, I wouldn't go on a dating site or anything like that. Have you been on them? I've been on them before, yeah. Not for me. Um, How long did you last? What What was the... This isn't for me. Did something happen? Did you get a message? I saw... See someone you didn't like? <laughs> saw a couple of people I uh, knew and was just like, ugh. Am I in the same category here? <laughs> and then um, I saw a man who was saying, I'm mar- like, no face, but I'm married just looking for, and I was like, I'm not on the right side here. Mm. I'm on the dodgy side. What about you? Am I on them? I still have a profile on one or two of them. I actually don't have the apps at the minute. I don't like them. Um... I'm more of a personality person, if I'm honest. Mm. Um, like, I need to vibe off people, which is why I think maybe I'm struggling at the minute to meet someone. Um, <clears throat> because I... Now, this is judgmental, but then ju- dating apps are judgmental. Of course. Because, like, you are just looking at someone's face and going, are they pretty, are they not? Left, right? Um, but I had... A couple of drinks there a few weeks back with one of my friends and we just used kind of nearly like a game do you know what i mean who's hot who's not um <laughs> and smash her she, smash her pass smash her pass <laughs> no <a> tiktok trend <laughs> um so we were thinking anyway, and i had a couple of matches in my um whatever the hell it is and she was like going through them and this is terrible i'm not going to say her name because she'll die she was like why are you matched with him? Why have you matched with him? Like, what and the thing? And then, it's, it's terrible. I was actually going, because I don't actually talk to them, do you know? So, 
it's kind of it is actually stupid do you know now that i've just said it out loud so and i was looking through like the few list and i was going oh my god why am i matched with him because i didn't actually find them attractive when i looked yeah. and then it was only when i clicked into their profile every single one of them had something that really made me piss myself laughing in their bio yeah. and i was going well that's why because that's they why. really really made so me laugh they're not taking it too serious yeah, yeah. so a, yeah. i i need to meet someone for that to happen and I don't know, not to sound like a dick, but I'm busy. Like, I work in Belfast, I work in Derry, I'm all over the place all the time. So I find it hard to actually fit. Like, I have friends I need to see, I'm trying to spend time with family, I have a little dog myself. And I find it hard to fit in time to date. So I don't want to see someone on a dating site, think he's gorgeous, spend my Saturday, my free Saturday evening with him over dinner and he's an absolute tune no i don't think anyone wants that exactly so i need to know i need to vibe off somebody i need to know that they're funny i need to know that they're a good person nice person they love dogs i think we should start our own dating app maybe or dating nights i think i'd like to go back to old-fashioned you meet someone you see them face to face yeah yeah because you could be cat- catfished as well which that's very I true do, yeah everyone <laughs> <laughs> this talk quite filtered. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, never filtered a photo in my life. <laughs> we're just never. back from holiday. No, we're just back from holiday, oh, no, no. and um, no, it's 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 sad. It is sad it because is I'm sad. supposed to be empowering women. I'm supposed to be supporting women. I'm supposed to be saying, you know, it's fine to have stretch marks and to be gaining weight when you're forty and you know all these things but yes perfect of normal. course it is but yet um if you go onto my instagram it's all perfect pictures that have been altered um and just on the face or whatever and that's fine but that's still bad enough and i get a lot of people coming through saying i love your content i love following you Gemma, but you know you should be a wee bit more real and you know because what you didn't look like that when i seen you in the garage this morning <laughs> here no one has seen you worse than the person that works in the garage near your fucking house <laughs> no one. That was true. Um. So yeah, and I need I need to start doing that. I really do. But I, as you, we spoke about this, when before, are you going to start tomorrow? Well, you said you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Like if I just put up like a raw, a raw picture, now people are going to say, you know, they'll have something negative to say about that too. Leading us on to trolling. Mm. Do you know what? I have a lot of opinions on it and they all come down to people just having too much time on their hands. But I really, from all of the things that I've done, like I started the modelling industry when I was 16, beauty pageants when I was 17 and then reality TV when I was 18. And I have been very, and do you know what? It actually makes me cringe that I even have to say this, but I've actually been very lucky in the trolling aspect of where I've not been tormented. Mm. yeah and I don't think anyone should have to call themselves look because I know girls that it's just we both know girls that's had to take themselves off social media mm-hmm. and that was their main income um because people are so horrible it's just the culture people think the culture is turning to be kind and we're more aware of people's mental health but the reality is people are becoming nastier um and there are people out there, and I've just been introduced uh, to TikTok because of yourself. Follow her TikTok; it's up on screen now. <laughs> um, and I've just, I just think it's probably the worst platform for trolling. It's just it's like really bad. Oh actually. my god! Um, I'm at the age and I really don't get unless you're in my inner circle, which is extremely small, as you know. I don't give a fuck. I, I really don't give a fuck what you're saying. And that's an honest truth. A A lot of people are like, oh, but really, maybe do you really? No, I don't give a fuck. I actually don't give a fuck what you think of me or my family or what I do or my business or this brunch club or anything. But if you're in my inner circle, I will take some constructive criticism. (laughs) And that's it. That's the way I live my life and I make no apologies for it. Do you think that's because you're older? Nice. I think it's because my skin is about that thick now. Okay. Um, from starting at seventeen, which is 
which is 23 <sighs> years ago. Mm -hmm. I had 23 years of being told you're fat, you're ugly, you're not tall enough, you're a slut. You're like every der derogatory thing oh. I've heard about myself. Like, be original. <laughs> um, I haven't heard any original stuff in a long time. So, um, no, it really doesn't bother me anymore. Probably still annoys my mom, and that's just a mother's course, instinct. Your mom, that I don't like. I know if anyone was to say Peggy Sue so wasn't lovely, it would really break my heart. So, can you imagine when I was getting trolled, what my mom felt like? But. Yeah, I, d I really don't care. How long do you think that's going on? What? Not caring. Five years, ten years, two months. Mm. What was if I'm really point? honest, if I'm really honest, I went on a holiday with my friends and one of our friends died. Um, and I have never been the same person from that. In good ways and bad ways mm -hmm. and one of the good ways is I don't give a fuck I, I care passionately about people I care about humans but I don't give a fuck if someone has something bad to say I mean you can go and um, so that was one of the good ways I changed after that experience and that was only bad no because that is therapy session <laughs> okay 